You know, it's always hot in Miami. Which is why it's the perfect place for Purdue to have its annual sales conference, because we are hot. We are burning up the competition with sales of OxyContin. The limited series Painkiller, directed by Peter Berg, is making its debut on Netflix this month. Berg is the man behind Friday Night Lights, Lone Survivor, Patriot's Day, and plenty of other real-life events turned into movies. Now he's turned his attention to a new topic, one he says is just as epic as a foreign war. On the eve of the release of Painkiller, we spoke with Berg in New York City. You know, I think it probably started with just um, the experience I've had personally with people I know who've died from uh, opioids. Uh, and, and also from cocaine and some from alcohol. I've seen, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I have people in my life who have, who've died. The story of the American opioid epidemic that's been raging for more than a generation has been told many times, but never on this scale. I'd like to start you on something new called OxyContin. I don't think there was much more than two days in a row that would go by where some crew member didn't come up to me and say, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I just want you to know, you know, my brother died of Oxycontin. My mother's been addicted to opioids for 25 years and we haven't seen her uh, in 15. It's not uh, exclusive to West Virginia or, you know, rural Ohio. It can be in Beverly Hills, Greenwich, Connecticut. Peter Berg grew up here in New York, but moved to Los Angeles in his early 20s to pursue a career in film. Wendy, you don't even seem bothered by what you've done. I did it for us, Mike. He's done plenty of acting, but directing was always the goal. One he's made good on, overseeing more than 20 films and TV shows. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Often inspired by real events. Right, that's it right there. Come on. Right, let's go. Move out. You know, I started out in college as an investigative journalist for my school newspaper. I always found personally that if I could meet the people and talk to the people and walk the walk where they had walked, and then I could sort of interpret that in my own way, I, I would do better and I would have more passion for it. And so for me, real stories have always been a greater source of uh, inspiration and passion. I would like to make a painkiller that people associate with improved well-being with life. Berg's latest is a fictionalized take on the development of OxyContin and the arc of the Sackler family, owners of Purdue Pharma. Uh, so you want to take a drug with twice the kick of morphine and give it to everybody? Yes. Part of my approach was to try and see if there was a way without ever minimizing the pain and the horror inflicted by this product, but to present the Sacklers in a slightly more dark, absurdist light. Stick with cancer. I love cancer. I'm happy with cancer, but the numbers do not add up. Painkiller features Matthew Broderick as Richard Sackler, the man who pushed OxyContin to market. We developed MS Cotton. We understand pain. I understand pain. What I thought was so inspired about Broderick was, you know, the guy that came into our lives as Ferris Bueller uh, couldn't be further away from that kind of a guy. Uh, and to take that, that sort of creative legacy and apply it to someone like Richard Sackler would, would result and a, and a very and a sort of enigmatic performance. You're such a good boy. Are you ready? Are you ready to make the donuts with me? Are you ready to make some money on cheap? Painkiller is partly inspired by the nonfiction book of the same name, written by investigative journalist Barry Meyer. These kinds of drugs were going to cure pain. They were going to make this huge advancement in medicine. And besides that, you know, the opioid industry, and Purdue in particular, had, you know, co-opted everybody that was supposed to protect our health, you know, regulators, politicians, professional medical groups, you know, there was just, you know, a deafening silence. You know, you have a very unpleasant component to your personality. Are you aware of that? Well aware of it. 
Meyer's experience investigating Purdue and the Sacklers is part of a composite character played by Uzo Aduba. Lila filled her prescription seven times. Yes. For a boob job. Yeah. That is a week on Vicodin, 10 milligrams max. The series was produced by Eric Newman, whose face might not be familiar, but his work is. Showrunner for Narcos and Narcos Mexico, both on Netflix. A drug dealer doesn't pretend to be anything but a drug dealer. A drug trafficker will tell you, I'm a drug trafficker, here are the reasons why, and they have an, you know, an explanation or excuse for it. These guys were doctors. They, this was the greatest betrayal of, of public trust in history. You don't think there's any difference between the Sacklers and Narcos? I think that in a lot of ways, the differences are favorable to the Narcos. <laughs> Today, the Sackler name has been stripped from pretty much every cultural institution they lavished money on, but not from the headlines. And though Purdue remains in bankruptcy, the Sacklers are still worth billions. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come. And Richard remains out there somewhere. <laughs> Maybe they've gotten away with it financially, but they're the ones who have to live with themselves every day. And Richard Sackler, the idea that he has not been able to escape that, the idea that in some form he is alone in a big, empty, expensive home with fire alarms going off in his head uh, felt um, appropriate to us. We should say again, this is a fictionalized take, mm -hmm. but there are testimonials from parents who've lost children mm. at the beginning of every episode. Those are very real. And there was just the news last week, the Supreme Court stepped in and said the agreement the Sacklers have been trying to negotiate and Purdue Pharma, which would have Purdue paying $6 billion and the Sacklers get full immunity mm -hmm. from any civil prosecution in the future. Uh, that was put on hold. So the story's not over yet. I found it fascinating that there was this idea out there that you could cure a pain. Yeah. Was that even a real thing? I well, mean... A lot of people <laughs> believed it. People wanted it. You want to of cure course, pain. Of course. And if you want it, people want... That's part of it. If you want to believe that that can happen, you'll take something if I tell you that that's what's yeah, going to, to happen. Yeah, Because you trust doctors. Right, but not to cure what's causing the pain. That was so interesting that yeah. a doctor would throw that out. There. And it's that whole pain chart, you know, what's right. the pain? Yes. One pain level, right. Yes. Using yeah. for so long. All yeah. right, Jeff, great story. Really great.